Darwin's advocate. Give it up for Muhammad Rami. So, for those of you who don't know me, I'll give you a very brief sentence about my personality. I'm a believer. I'm a believer in ideas. Because ideas could change people, could change the world. My talk is about the strength of cerebrate and the theory of evolution. The theory that I'd like to call is the single biggest idea ever. Now, why is this? Because its time frame is across 3.5 billion years ago. Cerebrating means using one's mind to think, act, or question. Is this wonder activity where you become so engrossed in questioning everything around you that you reach conclusions by yourself, for yourself. So, as I said, I'll be talking about a very debatable theory, that is, the theory of evolution, but the point behind this is to demonstrate how a single idea could refine mindsets. Evolution is very simple, and to demonstrate it, I'd like four volunteers, please. Two boys and two girls. Yeah. Any girls? Two girls? So, you have exactly 10 seconds to pick up the most number of picks using only one hand. You cannot pick more than one, and you cannot drag them. Okay? So, go. But after a series of questions, 
I could see that she was really enjoying answering them. And as she came up with her fun theory, I could see that the, the, the expression on her face was indescribable because she now knows a secret that would have never unveiled itself except later on. Questioning is something that we should all do all the time. For if we don't, then how are we human? My greatest influence is Charles Darwin, the man behind what is called, what I'd like to call, is the single biggest idea ever. Darwin questioned his faith, his principles, and everything he knew. He was an inquirer and a great man, a man of celebration. Now, you might think this is all bogus and is against what we all know, but back then, it was also against what we all, what they knew. And people also considered it bogus, but look how far it has come. He had devised that we all descended from a common ancestor, and that through natural selection, genetic drift, and mutation, we are where we are today. Over two million species live on Earth, and they all descended from a single ant. This Darwin calls it is the tree of life. The statement, I think, is what distinguishes us as humans. We are the peak of evolution. Now, the theory of evolution is brilliant because it all started with single I think. As you can see, Darwin scribbled words, I think, above his diary. But it's very weird how single I think could change people, could change the way they perceive the world, could change the science we know today as well. In 1973, Theodor Stosansky, yeah, it's a very hard name to memorize, penned that nothing in biology makes sense except in the light of evolution. Because it has brought together what first seemed disjointed facts into this coherent, explanatory body in natural history that could observe and relate what's in this plan. Theories can often contradict what we know and could lead to this perpetual inner struggle. But this is exactly what happened with Darwin. He was so hesitant to the point where he didn't even want to publish his theory. But I firmly believe that when you come up with something and it makes utter sense to you, you can never go back to how something works. Now cogitate and reevaluate your lives. Do you take things for granted? Are you lying to yourself? I'll give you an example. When I was young, I thought life was in black and white. And I remember going to my father and asking him, so dad, how was life in black and white? And of course now I realize it's very stupid. But back then, it was just an idea. No, no harm, no foul. Darwin's life-changing moment was when he went on voyage to the HMS especially to the south of Galapagos Island, where he observed several different finches with different beaks. Apparently, their beaks have been adapted to their specific type of diet. The cat, the ground finch, has a short, thick beak in order to crack hard seeds, whereas the cactus finch is this long, narrow, in order to reach nectar inside flowers. This is the situation, just in everyday life. But the difference is, Darwin took this situation and devised his view. There are so many situations in our everyday life that we pass by without reevaluating. But these are the moments that, if used correctly, could lead to a miraculous idea. You have to learn to observe and relate to any idea that may spring into our mind, but never whisper into an idea in your mind because it may be a metamorphosis. It could be able to change people, to change how they perceive the world. If you push down ideas, then you're cheating yourself and cheating others. Because really think about it. If you don't think, if you don't celebrate, then you're just going through the motions of life. Darwin's stupendous idea done by the court 50 years ago, and many evidence to our day supports Darwin's theory. I mean, take for example the Herbert Moth incident in, 19, in 1850, when the Industrial Revolution hit Great Britain and tree bugs started to gain this black color. But Herbert Moths had this white color, which, made, which put them at a disadvantage, of course. However, a colossal change was observed in 1990. 
where the same peppered moss apparently had dropped this white color and gained the black color, making them inconspicuous. This is just a theory, it's just an idea, but it's backed up by a whole science. This could very well be any of your ideas and have various patterns. Nothing in life is a coincidence. Everything happens for a reason. But the question is, what is this reason? New discoveries are being made to support Thomas' theory to this day. I mean, take for example, the missing two genes in our cheekbones. These genes, that apes have them, makes them their quad muscles chew with such strength that their skulls fuse at an early stage. Whereas us, as humans, we have those missing two genes, which allows us to grow our brain until a very later stage, 30 years old. This is a very slight change, it's two genes, just two genes. We should take this as a lesson that no matter how something small is, be it a concept or an idea or a situation, it may be the reason behind something bigger. The most distinctive evidence for evolution was provided by Mr. Richard Dawkins concerning the laryngeal nerve. It's too bald, yeah. So this nerve goes from your brain down an artery, round the artery, and up to your pancreas. Now, I want you to think how far this is in a giraffe's neck. Here's a video showing the development of this nerve across millions of years. As you can see, in fish, and let's face it, have no neck, this was the most direct route. But across time periods, it developed later on to be threat. So now that I'm done with evidence for evolution, how many of you believe in evolution? Well, that's a very fair amount because there are many arguments against evolution. I mean, take for example, why did reproductive organs come about? Or why is there a limit to fossil records? But you try to dissuade yourself, saying you don't have the brains to come up with a revolutionary idea or a concept, or that your idea simply isn't good enough. But you should know that every one of us is a genius in his own special way. There's no such thing as a person without a strong and weak point. But the best thing about an idea is that it could be changed, shaped, modified, and eventually be of utmost perfection. That is the point. Theories don't have to grow into laws. They are the fruit of our celebration. Whether it changes you or changes the world, it remains a significant idea, for it has a meaning behind it. And please, don't be afraid of criticism. I, for one, want to go to Harvard and want to affect our world. And I want to leave a footprint, but I'll never be able to do so if I just focus on people criticizing. The point is to think, ask questions, be and inquire of the world around you. But don't take things for granted. So you may ask me, will this benefit me? It'll make you human. It'll make everything in your world worthwhile. The strength of a single idea be the impetus to dramatic changes. I firmly believe that we are the ones that limit what we should think about, and even how we should think about it. I once read a quote that said, everyone who has ever had a shower has had an idea. This person who gets out of the shower, dries off, and does something about it that makes a difference. Be the engine of innovation that you are. Think, devise, and come up with the stupidest ideas ever. But at least you've tried. What have you got to lose? Choose to be innovative. Choose to be exceptional. To be unique. Curiosity may have killed the cat, but then it was. As George Carlin would say, teach your children to question everything. One word, sir.